Hello. So this video, we are going to be covering slash reviewing probably for most of you, uh, the various sort of properties of exponents and how we can use them. So reviewing our exponential properties. So I'm going to go through, through these sort of generally as well as give some examples. So you can sort of see what we're talking about here. So if we have something like three to the fourth, what does that mean, right? The very basic definition of an exponent. That means is that we're taking the thing and multiplying against itself four times. So three to the fourth, three times three times three times three, right? So in general, we tend to write these as some a to the n a lot of the times. Uh, so in general, a to the n is just multiplying a against itself n times, the literal definition of our exponential. <laughs> so if we have uh, the product of two things, and importantly, they're the same base, right? So three squared times three to the third, that's really three times three times three times three times three, we can write that better as three to the fifth, right? So again, the general version of this is that if we have a to the n times a to the m, again, it's important that they're the same base and we're multiplying, we can put those together by putting the powers together, adding the powers together, right? So we have a to the n times a to the m is a to the n plus m. Again, so if we have three squared to the th third, so if we're doing sort of a thing, an exponent, and then we're sort of applying the exponent to it, uh, just as a quick mention, I will say vocabulary-wise, this is called exponentiating. So we would say we took three squared and exponentiated it by three. Um, I only mention this because this might come up again a little bit. So this is going to take the three squared piece, right, the part inside the, the parentheses, and multiply it against itself three times. But that means that we have two threes three times, which is just six threes. So again, this is sort of hopefully review, but this is just saying that if we have, you know, a to the n all to the m, that we can put it down to one thing by doing a to the n times m. So if we have division of two, again, important they're the same base. We have three to the fourth divided by three squared. If we write this out, we have this as three times three times three times three over three times three. Now we can cross out like terms, right? So we have two in the top and two in the bottom. That gets me down to three squared. So again, the sort of general version of this, if you have a to the n over a to the m, that's just a to the n minus m. Now, as a sort of note here, it's easy to see that this is the case that, you know, you get that n minus m when n is bigger, but it turns out this doesn't need that. You can do that no matter what sort of one you have. If n is bigger, n is smaller, they're the same size, it all ends up working out. And this is because of how we define negative exponents, which in some sense seems mysterious, but I'm going to try to make the argument here that it's actually completely natural and obvious if you kind of tilt your head and squint a little. <laughs> so to that end, let's think about sort of what it means to take an exponent, right? So if we have eight to the one, well, that's just eight, right? That's sort of how we have that defined. If we have eight squared, well, that's eight times eight, right? Because again, the definition of exponents is we take it and multiply it against itself that number of times. Eight cubed, eight times eight times eight. Eight to the fourth, eight times eight times eight times eight. Don't worry, I'm not gonna keep going. This isn't, you know, like, I'm not the count like, ah, oh, three, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> but I wanna sort of point out a pattern which is in some sense obvious, but in sort of some sense it's actually pivotal, which is that as we sort of keep going down, right, as we increase one uh, to the exponent, what we're doing is taking the previous step and multiplying by eight, right? So when we went from, say, eight cubed to eight to the fourth, we added one to the exponent, but that just gave us eight cubed, right? Eight times eight times eight. We took that value and multiplied it by another eight. Again, this might seem sort of obvious. Why do we care? Well, here's the sort of squinting and tilting your head bit a little bit. What if we went the other direction? If we go the other direction, then the difference is really dividing by eight. Right, So if you look at eight to the fourth, I can go up one, meaning I can subtract one from the exponent by dividing eight to the fourth by eight, which would cancel one of the eights and get me back to eight cubed. Right, Seems fair, right? But we can use this to sort of deduce or figure out what the sort of next ones above, what the other values of this sort of exponent for eight should be. In particular, if we look at say eight to the zero, well, that's taking eight to the one, that's taking eight, right? And then since I'm subtracting one, that's moving, right? I'm moving up, I'm subtracting one, which means I wanna take that value and divide by eight. So it's really eight over eight, but that's just one. 
And in fact, this kind of property, which you probably learned is like anything to the zero is one, which by the way, blatant lie. Just so you know, this is a thing that's going to show up in Calc 1 and it's like a whole thing that they cover about how that's definitely not true. But what is true is any sort of finite non-zero number divided by itself is one. And if we think about why, it sort of makes sense, right? Because if I take any number, 15, 15 to the one is itself, and then if I go to zero, I'm taking that thing, 15, and dividing it by itself, which is one. This is also why zero doesn't really work out so well, because I would take zero and divide it by itself, zero. Now I'm dividing by zero, things are gonna get weird, right? So. This is the whole idea here, is that if I'm sort of moving up, if I'm getting sort of more negative or if I'm subtracting one, I'm dividing by that thing. So if I go up again, if I go to say eight to the negative one, I was gonna take my previous result, which was one, and divide by eight. But I can think of this sort of, I, I wouldn't normally write this, but I can think of this as just being one over eight to the one, right? If I go up again, I'm looking at eight to the minus two. But again, that's gonna be the previous thing, one eighth divided by eight. And if I sort of manipulate that so it's not crazy looking, it's gonna be one over eight times one over eight, which is one over eight squared. So this gives me that sort of negative uh, exponent property that sort of is usually shown as just like, oh, that's the way it works. But it turns out that sort of, it's a very natural thing to have as a, as a way of dealing with these negative exponents. And that's that, if we have something to the zero, we have one, right? Because you're basically taking a thing and dividing it by itself, unless that thing is zero, because you have zero over zero. And if I have something to the one, it's itself. And finally, if I have something to some negative value, right? If I have eight to the negative one, that's one over eight to the one, but sort of, as we saw with eight to the minus two, we would keep going. It really works out to be that if I have a to the minus n, then I get one over a to the n, meaning that what it does is I'm dividing by the positive power of that thing, okay? All right, so other things to know about exponential functions, this probably isn't quite as much uh, in the review category, but other things to remember about exponential functions is that they're strictly monotonic, meaning that they go in one direction. Uh, they don't sort of go up and down and up and down or anything like that. So in particular, if we sort of graphed some sort of exponential on an xy axis, it sort of looks sort of flat, but it is always increasing. And then eventually it sort of goes that up, up and away and, and takes off, right? But the thing is, is that because of that, that means that exponential functions are one to one, meaning that they're invertible, right? Because they would pass that horizontal line test. Now that one to one property is very useful if you're trying to solve Exponents, exponentials that are sort of nice enough, and we'll talk about what that means at, a, at another time, but if they're nice enough, we can solve exponential equations and, and uh, equalities by sort of utilizing this one-to-one -one sort of nature. So for example, if we have something like three to the three x plus one equals three to the two x minus seven, what that's really doing is it's saying that, okay, you have this like three to something and three to something, but that three to something, like that general format of three to a power is one to one, meaning that the only way these things can be equal is if their powers are equal, right? So the only way that this left side equals this right side is if the sort of exponent on the right is the same as the exponent on the left, which lets us sort of reduce to that case, right? We can have that three X plus one equals two X minus seven. Again, what's really happening here is that we're sort of utilizing logarithms in the background without knowing what they are yet. And we will talk about those uh, sort of in the future. But this is sort of abusing that one-to-one -one property because now we can just solve for x, right? We can move the two x over, move the one over. So I would subtract two x minus one on both sides. And that gets me that x is negative eight. And if I'm sort of not sure, or I'm a little dubious about this, I can plug in that negative eight. And that gets me that indeed I get three to the minus 23 equals three to the minus 23. Now, this might seem like a really sort of silly example, like how often are you gonna look at something that's like three to a thing equals three to a thing, like, oh boy. But it turns out with a little bit of cleverness, this applies in a lot more situations than you might expect. So for example, if we had something like eight to the two X minus one equals one quarter to the three minus X. It turns out we can do the same thing here it might not seem that way because like on the one side I have eight as the base and the other side I have one fourth as the base. These are not the same bases. So I can't just 
skip to the part where I put the exponents equal to each other. But both of these things are a power of two, right? So eight is two to the third, and one fourth is really one over two squared, so that's two to the minus two. So I can sort of replace them with this power of two and then use my log rules to sort of undo those parentheses, right? Because I have a uh, base to an exponent to an exponent. So I can multiply them and get rid of the parentheses. So that gets me to this two to the six x minus three equals two to the two x minus six. And now I have the same base, which means I can sort of reduce to the exponent case and then solve, right? Move the two x and move the three. And that gets me four x equals negative three or x equals negative three fourths, right? So this is sort of a little less obvious because we have the, the eight and the one fourth, but if I can find some common base that I can use to get to both of them, then I can go through this route, okay? All right, so what do we do? Well, we reviewed properties of exponents. A lot of this is probably review. Uh, we talked about sort of the very definition of them, how you can sort of multiply bases that are the same base together, powers of powers and all of these things. We hopefully <laughs> gave you a relatively natural way to think about negative exponents as this sort of process of repeatedly dividing to go sort of back up the tree, right? Subtract one. And then we talked about the one-to-one -one property and how that sort of lets us sort of exploit it to undo exponentiation in some, some way. So that is that.